if my crystal ball is working properly, I think in the near future, you're going to be hearing a lot about berberine and how it can help lower cholesterol levels. In the next few minutes, I want to take a deep dive into the research on this and more importantly, give you an idea of how berberine might be working inside of you. Let's go. Number one, what is berberine? If you haven't heard it before, it's essentially a naturally occurring compound found in some different plants, such as golden seal and Indian barberry, sometimes called tree turmeric. You may have seen it already in some cholesterol lowering dietary supplements, and we're going to talk about that research here. Additionally, it may be found in some diabetes supplements because there is evidence that barberine may also lower blood sugar and hemoglobin A. One C levels, leave a comment below if you want me to do a video on that in the future. Now, what is the evidence for all this stuff? Well, I think the best way to get the lay of the land is to look at studies of studies. These are called meta analyses, and basically, I got three of them here for you. So, we've got this investigation, it's a meta analysis, comes out of China food for thought. Most of these research studies do, to, do come actually from China. And this was uh, study, basically a, a, a meta-analysis of 27 randomized studies involving over 2,500 people. These researchers conclude that berberine plus lifestyle interventions, that's diet and, diet and exercise to you and me, was better than essentially diet and exercise at lowering total cholesterol, bad cholesterol levels, and even boosting good cholesterol. It was better than than the lifestyle intervention alone. Additionally, and this is interesting, berberine, when it was given with a statin medication, worked better than the statin medication by itself. Berberine plus the statin drug worked better at lowering total cholesterol, LDL, bad cholesterol, and also boosting good cholesterol. There's a reason I think why this is occurring, and this is the main reason why I wanted to bring this to your attention, because it's something I don't think is on many people's radar yet. Let's continue with Keep that in the back of your mind for another moment or two. Another meta-analysis. Here's an, a, a basically review of 11 previous studies involving almost 900 people. They find that berberine causes a significant reduction in total cholesterol, triglyceride levels, and low-density lipoprotein. And again, they're also showing, ironically, interestingly enough, an increase in good cholesterol levels as well with berberine supplementation. Next one. Another meta-analysis, this one involving 16 previous trials, over 2,000 people. They again show berberine significantly lowers total cholesterol levels, low-density lipoprotein levels, triglyceride levels, and again, they're showing an increase in good cholesterol levels as well. So when you look at the totality of the lay of the land, it does appear that the research is showing some significant reductions in bad cholesterol, LDL, total cholesterol, triglycerides, etc. One of the comments that I do see on, on some of these meta-analysis is that uh, the, the individual studies themselves may leave a little bit to be desired. They got some issues here and there, so it would like to see some better human studies done, but the totality of the evidence, when you crunch all the statistics together, is, is showing something positive is going on. So how does berberine work? And here's where things get very interesting. Berberine reduces PCSK9 levels in the blood. And I know what you're thinking, what the heck is PCSK9? It's a protein and it interferes with LDL receptors, receptors for bad cholesterol. In order to get rid of bad cholesterol levels, to lower them in the blood, the LDL molecule must combine with LDL receptors in the liver. Okay, well, turns out PCSK9, that protein knocks out the LDL receptors, so they don't work so well anymore, the result of which is an increase in bad cholesterol levels. So berberine appears to be lowering bad cholesterol levels by interfering or inhibiting PCSK9 levels. So the idea behind taking berberine as a dietary supplement is going goes like this, inhibiting PCSK9 levels, leads to better functioning LDL receptors, which in turn leads to lower LDL levels in the blood, okay? Which in turn theoretically means a lower risk of say plaque formation and heart disease. Why is this important? 
this lowering of PCSK9 levels is the exact same way that some injectable cholesterol lowering drugs appear to be working. You, you may have seen these advertised on television if you're say in America where they do advertise drugs on TV. Uh, it's, it goes by the name Repatha. That's one of these medications. Now, what is interesting is remember I said earlier that berberine plus a statin medication made the statin work better. Here's the reason why. Sometimes statin medications have a weird effect. They actually raise PCSK9 levels. So by giving a PCSK9 inhibitor like berberine or even Repatha to a statin might make the statin medication work better. So what I'm getting at here is, is that berberine may be a natural PCSK9 inhibiting compound that is available at pretty much every health food store in the world. So what's the evidence for all this stuff? How does berberine uh, stack up as being a natural PCSK9 inhibitor? Well, the research is kind of preliminary at best right now, but it does appear to show that something is happening. Here's an investigation where they basically gave berberine to mice and hamsters with high levels of, of, of cholesterol in the blood, and they did notice that berberine lowered PCSK9 levels about 50%. And in addition to that, these mice and hamsters also had lower total cholesterol and LDL levels as well. We've got another investigation. This one's a little more primitive. It involves basically liver cells that they kind of incubated in berberine. And again, noted that berberine reduced PCSK9 levels in these liver cells. I can't show you yet any human research because unfortunately it isn't out there yet. Uh, my hope is that they're in the pipeline and when they do come out, and I'm hopefully they will soon, that I will do a video on it. But this is the lay of the land, so to speak, in terms of PCSK9 inhibition by berberine. Not on humans so far, mostly on laboratory animals and isolated cells. But if the writing on the wall is correct, this is actually one mechanism by which berberine might lower LDL levels. And that's actually very interesting. Now, I know what you're thinking, how does berberine stack up against Repatha and these other injectable drugs? And the answer is, I don't have any head-to-head -head comparisons to you. This is just a real cursory summary of what I kind of put together in a review I wrote on all this. Uh, berberine, again, the research shows berberine is going to lower HD or LDL and total cholesterol and, and stuff like that. Uh, and whether or not it actually inhibits PCSK9 in people, again, I personally think it does, but I, I can't point to any human research yet. I can only look at what the research says uh, and it's on animals. Uh, there is research on humans and, and on these injectable drugs for lowering PCSK levels and levels. And these drugs are very effective at doing this. Downside of the drugs is that they're quite expensive. They might cost about a thousand dollars a month versus berberine, which is going to cost a heck of a lot less than that. I'm going to put a link in the description to the supplements that I investigated that I think you might want to take a look at. These are the products that um, I believe are quality and have what they say they have. Um, another down side of the drugs, got to take them by injection. Here we got orally. And then when I look at the side effects of the individual or studies on, on berberine, I don't see anything weird and, and significant popping up in healthy people as far as side effects are concerned. I do know somebody who has uh, actually suffered some actually from pretty crazy side effects uh, with, with, with Repatha actually, uh, really bad muscle pain, which again, I'll link to my review of that drug uh, so you can take a look at what happened. Again, uh, it's a drug over a period of right, so you got to need a prescription versus, in America at least, no prescription required for berberine. Now, things to consider and some side effects uh, if you're thinking about taking berberine for your cholesterol levels. Number one, when I look at the research, how much do they tend to use? Somewhere between about 500 and 1,000 milligrams a day for several months of, of continuous use. I would start with less than is recommended by the companies. We're all different. We all may have different side effects out there. So by starting with less, for, at least for the first week, the least you possibly can do for the first week might minimize any side effects that you personally might have. Although the research so far says if you're healthy, there really isn't anything that is really bad out there. Constipation, diarrhea, some nauseousness. Berberine doesn't taste very good, so you may have a little soury taste in your mouth. But other than that, I don't see anything strange as far as healthy people's side effects is concerned. But again, let's, let's double check and start with the least just to see what's out there for you. 
Berberine appears to have a blood thinning property, and because of that, anybody watching me who's maybe going to have surgery, you probably want to take stop taking berberine at least two weeks before having surgery, just because of that blood thinning property. And and that's also pretty wise for all other supplements you take, unless your doctor, of course, tells you otherwise. But that's definitely something to keep in the back of your mind. If you're pregnant or nursing, probably I'm going to say do not take do not take berberine if you're pregnant or you're breastfeeding. The reason is is that remember that that berberine lowers cholesterol levels and babies need cholesterol to grow. And berberine appears to also lower blood sugar levels as well, which again, growing babies need to grow. So I wouldn't chance it on either any of that stuff. Uh, also, there's really not a lot of pregnant breastfeeding dietary supplement research out there. So be honest with you, gang, this is not a door I would ever want to open for any dietary supplement. Uh, so just keep them back in your mind if this applies to you. If you take any medications, this is really important for anybody who takes medications, talk to your doctor. Berberine appears, and this is the reason I'm bringing this up, berberine appears to interfere with some drug metabolism enzymes. And if this is the case and does appear to be true, then it may mean that some medications will break down too quickly and other medications may break down too slowly. The result of either of these scenarios could be a problem. And that's why if you're taking any medication, it's a wise idea to run this past your doctor and see what he or she has to say about this. Now, berberine versus golden seal. This is actually important because golden seal is another dietary supplement you may see advertised on the internet for lowering cholesterol levels. Berberine is found in golden seal. So which would be the best choice for you? On this option, I think that berberine is going to be the better choice. And, and that's because I think there's stronger evidence for berberine lowering bad cholesterol, total cholesterol, uh, and boosting good cholesterol levels than golden seal. So I would go with the berberine and berberine HCL. That is what most supplements contain. Again, I'm going to put a link in the description so you could check out the products that I investigated myself that I have some faith in. So what do you think? Have you tried berberine for your cholesterol? Did it work? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, I'll be very curious to see what happens if uh, you've tried it. Again, don't forget to swipe, subscribe, like, and share, and share this video. Until next time, gang, I'm Joe Cannon. Go out, be safe, and where you can, do try to make a difference.